performed some of those exercises without any further explanation. The first one has to be done carefully. I tend to use a piece of neoprene so as to give myself uh, a degree of protection against uh, any adverse effect. I'm using the bull worker, but as I said, you know, this can be done with a towel. Very important when you're doing this, you place your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And a bit like you're doing in yoga, where you do your lion's face, I think it's called, or face your muscles, it's designed to make you more beautiful. That your face that you form doesn't look more beautiful when you're doing it. And the same with this exercise. So I've got a piece of rubber here with neoprene, okay, around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open, okay, so I'm literally allowing the back of this to stretch behind. Can you see? On the back of the head. The neoprene is affording some form of protection for me. Holding. I do an activation one first, holding for a few seconds. Of course, you'd be breathing normally, not chatting away. And now I'm going to do a strong effort, and we'll talk about how much effort you do, but you would generally not exceed 30 seconds because although people want to hold planks, etc., and other isometric exercises for long times. This endurance isn't really what isometrics was initially designed for. So we can do endurance work with isometrics, but for the moment, let's be looking at a hold of approximately 10 to 15 seconds. Breathing in and out normally, off we go. I've done 12 seconds there. When you take it off to save uh, any hair pulling, just let it slide up. And although that looks a bit violent and ruffles the hair, if you practice, it's safe. But please do practice and be careful. And if uh, you know, you've got long hair, I suggest you wear some form of headgear that stops the hair getting caught in the strap. That could be simulated very easily by using a towel or a belt. I'm using here a belt that's uh, available. A towel would perform the same purpose. And of course, you can hold it here and you regulate the amount of force and commence. So we've been pushing back with the head, the tongue was on the roof of the mouth, we're ensuring proper breathing, again a concern can be about blood pressure when you're lifting weights or doing isometrics, so the regulated breathing is very very important and again please make sure you've checked with your medical uh, uh, doctor, physician, physician, your medical physician so that you know that you're safe to perform, perform those type of exercises. Starting with a bull worker again. Having used the exercise where we are pushing against the back of the neck, so keeping our spine in line, our head up. We're now bull worker, I've got a nice solid brick wall here. Don't go doing it on plasterboard, otherwise, you know, door frame may be more suitable. Tongue to the roof of the mouth, spine in line two hands pushing against it, an activation one first, that 40% of my effort, that is my maximum effort, and now I'm going to do the exercise properly, breathing in through the nose out through the mouth, tongue on the roof of the mouth so there will be no speaking 
just the exercise effort. Again, roughly about 12 seconds, and if you have a clock on the wall or a timer, you can become quite accurate. We'll talk about the undulation of a program, always important in all physical training, not to be too linear, you know, just getting harder every session, but to undulate, and you'll find you'll get better results. Now, let's look as well at the next exercise. I'm just going to put the camera down towards the floor more. So we have a plastic box, but uh, it don't be full by its appearance, it's strong, it can take a fair bit of weight. Rubber to save any slipping here. And I'm going to come up, and I'm dropping down with a straight spine, tongue on the roof of the mouth. Again, I've warmed up, activated, prepared for the activity. I come down. I'm going to be doing this with the tongue on my roof of my mouth, jaw set, neck engaged, so there'll be no talking. Breathing normally, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Take advantage of the stool again because many of these exercises can be done in a seated position. And we're now going to look, as we're working the upper body and shoulders, at exercises that we can use for the shoulders. So one good one, previously warmed part of our activation or warm-up, holding high, pulling foot. Again, I'll be breathing and keeping my jaw firmly set so I won't be talking throughout the exercise. So there, I'm pulling out. It's a good strong exercise. I'm now going to go to a standing position some of the others and we'll be returning to seating in a moment. Form the chest compression and here we're going to come up, pull and press. Again I'll be breathing and keeping a solid position, spine in line throughout the action. Do this slide sideways at an angle so you can see the back hand more clearly. I'm getting near there to maximum effort. You can see I'm a little more out of breath. Part of the beauty of isometrics is you can alter what you're doing, so whilst engaging the muscles, putting tension into them, you're developing not only the muscle you're working, but normally your core as well, particularly your abdominal region, when you create this tension. And that's one of the great advantages of isometrics and why it should be included in most people's workout programs if not in the warm-up, in the program itself. Now having done that one, we're now going to do uh, our bow and arrow type position, the Robin Hood I call it. Here, pulling, digging. Other angle. Mm -hmm. 
So we've done a push and a pull. We're going to look at a further exercise and other alternatives when you're not using this in a moment. So let's just quickly review one or two of those. Again, a towel or a belt can easily be used for the bow and arrow position. Holding, adapting the length, the range of movement that you want, building up like so. Is it inferior to use a belt or chains? Certainly not. But the Bullworker X5 does provide one or two advantages and there are other very good Bullworker products available. Um, but the point is, if you've got one, they're mobile and easy to carry, but so is a belt. Pulling, building up, having activated, ensuring good breathing, and you can see how easy it is to work them. In terms of the compressing exercise, this could be achieved by using your own hands, a fist, and pushing in and pushing out in the same way. So you have no need for extra equipment if you're traveling or anything heavy, but if you do have a ball worker and can safely dismantle it, they fit into a a case very easily. Let's look at one or two other exercises in this region, upper region. We've worked pushing with the head, pulling back. We've worked with tensing the jaw, so we're dealing with forces playing up. And we've worked on the shoulders to a degree. Let's now return to a seated position. Again, you can use a number of aids and you don't require special equipment to achieve this the ball worker can be very useful. Currently you'll see that I'm in bare feet because I'm on a soft matted area. You don't need to see my head necessarily but you do my foot if you're using a ball worker. You're holding, spine in line, bring me up and breathe. Changing. Important to keep the spine in line so that you don't injure yourself. Again, you can activate with this so that you're not putting yourself at undue risk if you have any old injuries. To begin. Now again, these exercises can easily be performed using a belt or a towel and simply by holding the uh, uh, belt under the opposite foot and by pulling up you can create a good moment, working the muscle, there's force being created but there's tension, no actual movement. That's the whole point. When you're pulling two ends, there's a great deal of force. If one end left, there'd be huge movement. But the muscle length isn't changing. There's no movement about the joint. You're creating a moment. You're still making the muscle stronger, albeit in a limited range of movement compared with some other exercise protocols. But when combined with those, isometrics can be marvellous. Now, let's look, if we may, at exercises on the floor because the dear old press-up and plank have a role to play here and it's worth noting that the abdominal region is one where some of the worst practices sometimes can occur as people exercise doing marvellous things for abdominal muscles but putting their back at risk, particularly if they have a back injury or history or a problem they may not be readily aware of. So let's now look at the 
dress up and the plank as an isometric upper body and core exercise. Hello again, so let's look at so let's look at press up position and how this can be used and also how you can adjust it. So we can do a press up position with our hands in different configurations. Therefore, if you have a need or a particular range of movement you need to work, without any equipment you can accommodate that. Let's start with a classic position, quite a, a narrow position, say, shoulder width or below, we're holding, and as we go down, we're looking to lower, halfway down, and breathe. Again, a little lower. And so on. And of course, if we want to make it harder, we can just simply alter the loading, you know, alter the point at which we're pressing from. And so, we can use a raised foot position as I have here, a simple little box behind, putting the feet on. And again, you can introduce a little bit of balance by doing it one legged, holding the leg out, coming down. The other side or changing position. So maybe if I have a need in a particular sport to have hands off line, still wanting to get a good position, I can do so. alternatives that you can use are vast. Now interestingly enough, many people misunderstand the point about tension. The core in many ways is about protecting the spine, maintaining good posture and enabling force to travel often from legs through up and across the body in a functional way, again, functional strength really not just being about body weight exercises, but replicating the physical needs or outcomes that enable functional real things to be performed. So pushing a car starts with an isometric exercise because a heavy car doesn't move straight away. And so even though there may be Tension, there can still be movement and we'll go on to talk about the way in which isometric moments occur even in dynamic activities in further videos. But let's look at the plank. One of the things that can be done with the plank is it can be used to help with postural situations as well. So if you have a bad back and you want to maintain a better posture, creating strong uh, abs, and to quote the Journal of Strength and Conditioning, 100% of abdominal muscle being used, whereas I think with sit-ups or crunches you're only using something like 60, and of course there is a potential toll on the back. So with the plank, we're coming through, and again, whilst you may wish to create endurance, it is quite likely that you would be better placed doing more advanced exercises once you're able to go for a certain period of the plank because after a while you will adapt and so the muscles that you are trying to hit intensely will inevitably have to be supported by other muscles and although you're using more than one muscle group one of the great strengths of 
um, isometrics as it is using more than just one muscle. It's not a compound movement, but it's using more than one muscle group. And it's important that we bear that in mind. So simple plank, okay, hands flat or fist, coming nice strong buttocks and squeezing the buttocks throughout. Don't go down here, straight and squeeze the buttocks, head up, holding. And of course there are various exercises allowing movement adaptations of the plank. But for the moment, the plank can be utilised and it is a good isometric exercise. Bring in through those out from the mouth, keeping a nice posture. And I would advise holding for about 30 seconds to a minute, some people do, yes. But rather intensely squeeze the buttocks, work the abdominal region, and by so doing, you're also assisting in developing good posture, working the back, and getting a large amount of core muscles to take part in the exercise. We're now going to look at the use of a chin-up bar, something again which is easily accessed in most hotels, playgrounds, universities, schools, or you can have one as I have just in the kitchen, allowing you to do ordinary exercises like pull-ups and some of the suspension exercises that we'll be looking at uh, in other videos. But it also affords the opportunity for some isometrics that can be very useful in certain sports and in common daily activities as well. We'll now move to the chin-up bar. Now I'm going to do an exercise, an isometric exercise, using the chin-up bar. This can be a very good way of building up or switching on, activating muscles which may not have been used for a long time. And for those of you seeking to improve your ability in the area of pull-ups or chin-ups, this can be a very good way of building up the strength that you require in order to achieve that movement exercise. So without further ado, let's look at the exercise itself. I'll do them and we'll discuss them afterwards. First, we're going to do a hold at 90 degrees. We do this hold for approximately 6 to 8 seconds. You can go as long as 30, but I wouldn't advocate longer than that when you're commencing. Hold and breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. You can lower a little if you're relatively experienced, and of course if you're not, just do one and then move to the next. Holding again for a period of approximately six to eight seconds. The angles that you decide can be important depending on the type of activity you're training for. Because one of the things about the isometric program we're saying, for general life and for athletic endeavors, is that it can be focused to be very specific and in itself that gives it great uh, use because of the way in which it's serving a specif specific, a specified purpose. Let's now look, we then did our hand grip like so. Let's now move to a hand grip where we have our hands in a traditional chin-up position. So we're going to go to a 90 degree, but we could start at the top, holding. Breathing into the nose, out through the mouth. Then to 90. And these could be done individually, so that if you're not experienced, instead of doing one or two or three, you just do one of the movements first, while you're activating and developing the strength and ability to develop tension in the muscle to hold the position. Isometric positions utilizing the chin-up bar. So this is Dr. Hannah uh, from PLD Academy talking about isometrics. This is my husband, Tony. Um, so despite being very strong with a good sort of rugby and martial arts background, I uh, couldn't do any pull-ups until he'd had some isometric sessions in the last week. 
So over to you to demonstrate what you've learned. This is in fact my third isometric session. Well, can I ask you, I'm uh, Paul Lloyd Davis, just in the background here. Let's just do, as you were not doing any chin-ups at all, let's have a look at how many you can manage now. So if you want to demonstrate those, I think that will be the results of your isometrics will, will tell us a lot. Can you go a little lower? Marvellous and relax. So you're getting some good reps in there. Uh, um, clearly, you weren't getting any before. Is that is, that's the case? Yes. Embarrassingly so. Okay, sorry. So now going to uh, ninety degrees, please. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, and relax. So again, we're just talking off camera, but Surridge is now going to complete the three uh, sets and he's going to go jump on, he's going to go down to 90 and then lower to just a few degrees at the bottom end holding that for six seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand and relax. Marvellous. And of course this is only half of the set because the other set involves doing a wide angle, a wide grip, hands facing outwards. And how have you found those? Are they, are they challenging? Yeah. You're getting progress in the same way. Yeah. That that was what the the second one is where I'm weakest. So we'll see how I'm doing in a week. Marvellous. Okay. Well, that's uh, uh, Tony and Dr. Hannah for PLD Academy. Just pop in and say hello, Hannah. We we can. Yeah, Naira. <laughs> and Yaira, who's the assistant, new arrival to the team. For the moment, over and out.